Hey, welcome to days 10 through 17 of the Every Bit Counts Challenge on Open Hand Farm. I'm recording out in the garden today because this is where what I decide to can for the Every Bit Counts Challenge starts. So it didn't start when I planted these plants. It started by going down to my larder and seeing what we had that we used a lot of, seeing what we had that we didn't use a lot of, or going to my freezer and jars of food that was dehydrated just to see what we needed. Then I started plants that would fill our needs and then planted them in the garden. So the reason I have a garden and have a bigger garden this year than I did last year So let's say I go to the store and spend $300 to buy food to preserve it specifically for the pantry challenge. And then I am able to go two months without going to the store, except for spending a small amount, like maybe $20. I still spent that $400 in August in order to do that pantry challenge in January and February. So my challenge to myself this year was to try to grow as much food as I could so that I'm not spending money to do the Every Bit Counts challenge and causing me to have actually spent money for the pantry challenge. Does that make sense? I am spending some money because there are just things that I need in order to fulfill a recipe. But I will use this food not only for January and February, but for the months in between there and after there as well. So in this video, you're going to see me do a couple of changes to some recipes just so that I don't have to go buy extra things. So I will point those out to you as I'm doing it so that you can see how I am using what I have wisely and trying not to put extra money into creating food for January and February. All right, enough of all of that babble. Let's get in and see what I made this week for the 2024 Every Bit Counts Challenge, days 10 through 17. For Saturday, it was a very busy day, so I just made some dehydrated tomatoes. I've done this twice now. It's very easy. This time though, I decided to put down one of the silicone mats under them because it does make a big mess on my normal little screen tray. And I don't like cleaning all that up. I don't have time for that. <laughs> so all you do is slice your tomatoes about a fourth of an inch, uh, brush them with a little bit of oil, and then sprinkle however much mixture you want on top of them. It is uh, Parmesan cheese, Italian seasoning, and garlic salt. Very little garlic salt, more Italian seasoning, and about, I don't know, more cheese. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you. I'm, I'm going to try and measure it out the next time. I just keep forgetting, you guys. I'm so sorry. I will actually link the recipe if I can find it. I put it in the dehydrator and set it at a low temperature for several hours. Now Sunday, Mark jumped in with me and helped me out. First of all, we smoked a turkey. It was so good. But I took several of my peppers out of the garden. Now these are some different peppers. I can't remember the names off the top of my head. So, and actually I can't even pronounce them. So I will type them in here for you. I took all the seeds out and cut the tops off and then he smoked those for me as well. Here's the jalapenos and I went ahead and cut them in half because it was just easier this way. 
and then he took all the red peppers out and smoked them as well. They smelled so good when he brought them in. We had some last year and they work great. So what I do is I just lay them out on a pan and flash freeze them and then bag them up and make sure and put that they are smoked on there. And then after the turkey was all cut apart, I put the carcass in the crock pot and started some broth. Now for Monday, the first thing I did was take the tomatoes off of the dehydrator trays. And as you can see, my trays are clean. This little sheet is dirty, but it will be so much easier to clean. Then I put the tomatoes in half gallon jars and sucked the air out in order to seal them. I did put a uh, oxygen absorber in there as well. And I have an old school way of sucking the air out because I do not have one of those little machines that sucks it for you. So I bought a new brake bleeder and I just fill the hole with that and pump until it goes up to about 20. And then I know that it's done. Now, your hand does get tired of pumping sometimes, especially if you've been working hard. So I can just lay this down on the edge of my bar, let that lower part hang off, and then just push on it instead of pump it. And that makes it a lot easier. So that's the lazy way, but it's also the most effective way because it gets done much faster. <laughs> And when it reaches like between 15 and 20, I usually stop and the lid is sealed and I feel really good about it. The next thing I did is Mark is not a big fan of dark turkey meat. So I usually make like turkey and rice soup or something like that out of it because then he doesn't mind it. So I decided that I was going to take this dark meat split it up between some jars and I had some already canned smoked turkey broth that I will, will fill the jars with after I put the meat in and then go ahead and can them. And that way when I want to make turkey and rice or whatever I want to make as a soup with this base, I can and it's all in one jar. I just need to thicken it or add rice or whatever. And I also completed the second jar of eggs to be stored on the shelf. It's called water glassing. And you use a mixture of lime and water to put over eggs that are fresh from the chicken with the bloom still on that are clean. So this is what it looks like when I first pour the mixture in. And a little bit later, it's still a little foggy and eventually it settles on the eggs or on the bottom and that's fine. Then here we are all ready to Tuesday. I want to show you one of the things that is so important after you're done canning and before you put it on the shelf. This is the turkey soup base that I processed yesterday and I don't know if you can see how shiny my hands are but this jar has oil on the outside of it. Some of the broth siphoned out as it was pressure canning and that just happens. So the important things that I want you to not forget is number one, you take your rings off in order to store your jars. If you leave your ring on and it has not sealed this lid properly, then you think it's okay and you put it on the shelf. And maybe you pull it out someday, you take the ring off and the lid just comes right off. And what's inside has molded or even worse, it doesn't appear different, but you eat it and it makes you sick. 
So the reason you're going to take your ring off is you should be able to hold your jar by the lid and it not come off. You can't check that with your ring on. So we're just gonna leave the rings off. I know that this lid is sealed. Then what you're going to do is use hot soapy water and actually put your, let me wash my hands off first. Put your jar in the water and clean it off. You want to make sure and clean where the ring was and around the threads so that that is clean as well. Then after you wash it really well, you rinse it and dry it and label it and then put it on your shelf. The first thing I did late Tuesday morning was to go ahead and strain out the turkey broth. I wanted to make sure I got all the bones and little pieces of stuff out. So I just strain it into a big bowl. And from that bowl, I just fill my jars. Now, I know that I'm not gonna get a dozen jars out of this, but any little bit that I can put away is great. So that's what I'm doing. And this is what it looked like when it came out of the canner. It's very hot and rolling and boiling. <laughs> That's why you don't want to set it in a cold spot or somewhere where kids can get to them because they are very hot. If I set them in somewhere cold or on a cold surface, those jars would crack. Now the next thing I'm gonna work on is French onion soup. I went out the day before and harvested my sad little onions. We had so much rain and then so much heat and the soil that I planted them in was not the greatest. It was a new garden bed. It just didn't work like I had hoped. So that's okay. I'm gonna put them in the French onion soup. The same day, our dryer decided to stop working. This little piece here, was missing from here. So Mark had to order the pieces in. I of course had two loads of laundry that were one damp and one wet. So I laid them out on a plastic table and just kind of kept flipping them and rotating them because of course it was a rainy day and I couldn't use my clothesline. So you guys, things happen while you're trying to get all this canning done. Just keep going, keep going. You can do it. My onions had to cook for an hour before I could take the lid off and actually start caramelizing them. So while they were cooking, I decided to mix up my beef broth. Now this is somewhere that I chose to save money. Instead of buying beef broth, I have this jar and another jar of beef bouillon, and I'm going to use that. So I read the directions and it said to use 1.5 tablespoons per quart. I am working with six quarts of water. So I decided to put three quarts in a gallon jar and three quarts in another gallon jar since I didn't have a huge container to put it all in and be able to pour it easily. I love working with gallon jars when I have to pour things. So I figured out how many tablespoons I would need and I divided that in half. It said nine tablespoons would be the amount, but I went ahead and went with 10 so that I could put five in each container. So I added boiling water to the jar. I put the bouillon in and let it sit and then added more water and stirred it all up. I still had time after I got that mixed up, so I decided to use some of the cucumber powder that I have made to make a cucumber ranch dressing mix. So I have this bag of buttermilk powder that I got from Azure Standard just to have on my shelf. So I'm pouring it into a five gallon jar. 
I always cut the label off of the bag and tape it to the jar so that I know exactly where I got the mix or beans, oats, whatever. And I know the size of the package that I had previously ordered as well, so that when I reordered, I would know what I needed. So I will use some of this buttermilk powder as well as my cucumber powder that I dehydrated on one of the first days of this challenge. And then there's parsley that I need to grind up smaller, so I do that. This is out of my garden, as well as some dill from my garden, and then some onion powder, and top it off with some garlic powder, and a little bit of salt. As you can see, I'm mixing this in a quart jar because I wasn't quite sure how big of a container I needed. So I then transferred it into a pint jar and labeled it. I also put the directions on the lid so that I would know how to mix it. And finally, my onions were done with their initial cooking. Now I need to remove the lid and add my spices and let them caramelize. And then after that, add my broth. Man, you guys, this is smelling so amazing. This is worth cooking, let me tell you. And start filling my jars. I ended up with seven quarts and three pints of French onion soup. I'm pretty excited about that. And then on Wednesday, I'm making more tomatoes, but I'm using the tomatoes that are not paste tomatoes, and I have too many slicers, so I'm just like, if they're starting to get too ripe or whatever, I just throw them in the dehydrator so that they don't go bad, and I know they will be eaten this way. Now, I'm also running out of the salt that I put in with the tomato mixture. It's a Lowry's copycat recipe where you add salt, then garlic powder, and then parsley, which I will again grind up to be much smaller. My friend Erica gave me this mortar and pestle for my birthday last year, and I use it all the time. And here you can just see how it looks, just like the Lowry season salt you buy at the store, and it tastes delicious too. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is more peppers, but these peppers, I'm not going to smoke, we're going to fire roast. So I will roast them until they are just lightly browned by the fire because I do not peel the skins off. I leave it on there. And we use them for fajitas or just all kinds of things. We used so many of these last year through the winter and I loved having them on hand in the freezer. They just smell so good. I did some jalapenos as well. Now these are actually not jalapenos. I went ahead and flash froze these as well. I just lay them out on some wax paper where they're close, some overlapping a little bit, it's okay. And then I put them in the freezer and when they're done, I take them off and put them in a Ziploc bag that is labeled, and these will definitely be labeled fire roasted, not smoked, so that I know the difference in the peppers that we've made. My raspberry bushes are still going strong. You'll see some dead, but we also have some new life that I will have new berries the rest of the month and maybe beyond. I picked three more pints of berries. So again, I will lay them out and flash freeze them as well. Before I went to bed, I put some garbanzo beans in a bowl as well as some red beans for tomorrow's projects. We're going to start Thursday by making some hummus mix in a jar. I made some of this last winter with a friend and I really love it. 
Now, I will tell you that you can also toast your sesame seeds, but you don't have to. This time around, honestly, I just forgot. I had so much on my mind. So I just put those in, and those will kind of represent your tahini when you mix this all together. So you add your sesame seeds, then you'll put some salt, some cumin, some lemon juice, and then your roasted garlic. I had these in the freezer from the first few days of this um, Every Bit Counts Challenge. So I just grabbed some of those and put those in and then add the garbanzo beans until you have an inch headspace and then cover with boiling water. Now I also made some that was roasted red pepper and then add some regular garlic as well and they turned out beautiful too. Then I'm going to start a project that was really big. As you can see, it has three pages of directions. Some of that is notes and I'm glad I've read those notes because I was going to use chicken broth, which was on the recipe, but in a note, she said you could use ham broth. Well, I didn't have enough ham broth because I'm making a double recipe, so I needed 12 cups of broth. So I used that smoked turkey broth that I just made a couple days ago, which I hated to take it off of my shelf, but it will be so good in here. So this is going to be a red bean and sausage kind of Creole type soup that I'm really excited about. So I had soaked my beans overnight. I get those cooking because they have to cook a little bit while you do all the other prepping. So the other prepping includes slicing up some smoked sausage and I'm going to weigh it out to make sure I have the proper amount. So I am only using one pound of bacon for the two recipes instead of two pounds of bacon because again, I didn't want to go to the store and buy the bacon to put in there. I already had this on hand. So after cutting the meat and the bacon, you put that in. Well, I didn't want to add the broth with the fat cap on top. So I stuck it in the freezer just for a little bit and let that harden. And then I took it off. It was not long enough to freeze the broth. Then I went out to the garden in the rain again for the second day in a row and picked some green peppers. I picked some that were starting to turn red because I just think they would taste better than just green green. And I chopped those up really fine and added those as well as some onion. She has a list of seasonings you can have if you don't have the Creole seasoning, but we had it, so I used it. And then I filled my jars. I did some pints and some quarts because someday I might want to have a jar of this while Mark's at work or whatever, and I don't want to open a whole quart. Make sure you have enough broth in there to cover everything. Clean those edges again so that your lids will stick tight. And this is what they looked like when they came out of the canner. I ended up with nine quarts and seven pints of this. Here we are on Friday. I needed to not have a lot of prep work on Friday. So I just went ahead and thawed out some ground beef the night before that I had been wanting to can that I already had in the freezer and went ahead and canned that. Since the bulk of the time that we use this, it is for nachos or something like that that I just open and use quickly. So I went ahead and put some of that taco seasoning in a few of the jars so that we would have canned taco meat. The second thing that I really needed to have on hand is some granola. So I do a fermented granola where you either add whey or vinegar or sourdough starter to ferment your oats and nuts before you start adding the other ingredients and cooking it. 
So I always use, of course, a sourdough starter. I try to use raw nuts. These pecans, we had gone to a pecan farm and gotten them. So I'm really excited to use those this time. They are just so good. So I added the nuts, the oats, filtered water, and my sourdough starter. And then you have to stir it every once in a while so that it doesn't make clumps. So I worked on that and you let it set anywhere from three to 12 hours. And when it has set however long you want it to, you add the other ingredients. And that is the oil and sweetener. I went ahead and added a little bit more honey than I usually do because I just had a little bit left in the jar. And I like to switch things up sometime and instead of using vanilla, use almond extract. So that's what I use this time. And you stir that all in and then you lay it out on baking trays and bake it at 300 degrees for like an hour, hour and a half. Then after it cools a little bit, you add your dried fruit. You don't wanna bake your dried fruit in there because it gets hard and drier than it already is. So I added raisins and cranberries that I get from Azure Standard that are infused with apple juice instead of sugar, and they're just great. I also use these chopped dates that they have and they do not have any sugar on them as well. And I was able to get four half gallon jars. And so I sealed them up with my brake bleeder and I have those to put on the shelf. That is very exciting to me. Now we're at Saturday again. I really didn't want to spend all the time that I did on this project, but it turned out that it took a lot of time. So, I wanted to try to make ketchup. I'm making a half recipe in case we don't really like it. I took my big bowl of paste tomatoes, cut them in half and laid them cut end down on a couple of trays, put them in the oven and roasted them. And when they came out, I let them cool a little bit and I got out my Victorio food strainer and started milling them through there to get all of the skins and seeds off to one side and the juices that I would use in my big pan. And I just periodically will pour that into, again, a gallon jar because that will be easy to pour into my cooking pan. While the tomatoes were cooking, I made a vinegar mixture with some spices in it and I also cooked some onions until they were translucent. So now that the tomatoes are processed and all of that is done, I can put it all together and make ketchup. In order to cook this ketchup down, I didn't want to leave the pot on the stove because that can just bubble and boil and be a mess and you gotta keep checking it. I just used my crock pot and as you can see here, I started way up at the top above that little lip line and I went ahead and used an emulsion blender on it to make sure everything was chopped up as smoothly as possible and I decided to just try to kind of pour the mixture on top of itself to see if it would sit there and that's how I decided it was thick enough to go ahead and can. So I decided to do mine in jelly jars because we do not eat a lot of ketchup. Mark actually doesn't like ketchup, but he does like the taste of this. This way we can open a jelly jar and it won't go bad before we get it eaten. In a pint jar, it might just sit in the fridge and go bad and I wouldn't want that to happen after all this work. So these are water bath canned for 10 minutes and when they come out, they look beautiful.
to take a minute and just thank all of the new subscribers I have for subscribing and joining our Open Hand Farm family. It's amazing to see your comments. I love getting to know you and you are so kind to me. Thank you so much. If you have subscribed to our channel, both old and new subscribers, I would ask that you click on that notification bell so that you know when we have a video come up. Now I know that the Every Bit Counts Challenge is a special thing that people really like to watch. And I do a lot of different kinds of videos. There's always some surprises in there that might benefit you in the long run. And I would just ask that you continue to come along so that I can get to know you better and you can get to know me and my husband, Mark, better. So until next week, blessings on you and yours.